the administrative center of an empire that spanned three continents, the imperial residence of the Ottoman dynasty, a distinguished center of education for the statesmen and their wives, preparing them for their future roles. An academy of art that nourished the Ottoman art, elevating it to a level of prominence. The Topkapı Palace. Located on the peninsula overlooking Bosporus, the palace is surrounded by the Golden Horn on one side and the Sea of Marmara on the other. Extending over an area of 700,000 square meters, the palace's initial construction was started during the reign of Mehmed the Conqueror, and in time, the palace became a monumental complex as the later sultans added other buildings. Unlike the European royal palaces, where high ceilings are basic elements of architecture, the Topkapı Palace was built in unmonumental proportions. As Sultan Abdelmejid moved to the Dolmabahce Palace in 1854, the Topkapı Palace ceased to be the imperial residence. However, the royal treasure continued to be preserved there. The palace was converted into a museum in 1924 by the order of Atatürk. Having served as the administrative center and imperial residence of the Ottoman state for 380 years, the Topkapı Palace is the richest palace museum of our times with the 86,000 artifacts it houses. The imperial gate standing between Hagia Sophia and the Fountain of Ahmed III is the grand entrance to the palace. Built during the reign of Fatih, the gate represents the strength and functional austerity of the Ottoman governmental philosophy. Embellished with Turas, the inscription on the panel reads, May God make eternal his empire and exalt his residence above the most lucid stars of the firmament. The imperial gate is formed of two doors inside one another. The doors lead to the first courtyard, which is called the Parade Grounds. During the Ottoman period, the Parade Court was always a crowded square, full of palace officials, businessmen and foreign ambassadors visiting the Sultan. On significant occasions such as the Friday, Selamluk, or at the beginning of military expeditions, the Ottoman sultans would pass from this car in a ceremonial way. In Fatih's funeral ceremony, 25,000 janissary, cavalries and court officials were gathered at this court. Of the service buildings on the parade cart, only Hagia Irene, which served as an armory, and the Royal Mint have survived to this day. With its towers, Babu Selam, the proper entrance of the palace, bears traces of medieval architecture. Above Babu Selam, which is also known as the Gate of Salutation, rests an inscription of Kelimei Tevhid with Turas of Mahmud III and Mustafa III below. The gate of salutation leads into a courtyard, which is known as the Council Square, as it hosts the Dome Chamber, where the meetings of the Imperial Council were held. Together with the surrounding buildings, the courtyard was designed as a ceremonial ground, serving as the official representation of the Ottoman state. The Council Square was the symbol of the state and of justice. Grand state ceremonies, such as ceremonies of royal enthronement, called Julus, the payment of janissary stipends, formal holiday festivities, and reception of ambassadors were held here. Attended by thousands of janissary and Timariot cavalries wearing impressive costumes, these ceremonies have inspired numerous artists. The Tower of Justice next to the Dome Chamber was built during the reign of Fatih as a tower kiosk symbolizing the palace. Renovated in various periods, 
The tower was originally built for the Sultan to watch the activities carried out at the palace as well as Istanbul. Surrounded by a wide porch with three domes, the dome chamber was built by Suleiman the Magnificent as the meeting place of the Imperial Council. The wooden ceiling of the porch is decorated with magnificent hand carvings. Embellished in Rococo style, the marble entrance is surrounded by a bronze screen. Led by the Grand Vizier, the meetings of the Imperial Council were held in the deliberately decorated Divan Chamber, where judiciaries of Anatolia and Rumelia discussed state matters, and the Sultan would monitor the meetings behind the latticed grill above. Serving as the seat of the government for centuries, this room also hosted the marriage ceremonies of Sultan's son-in-laws. And the Grand Vizier received the foreign ambassadors here. All these ceremonies were held according to a strict and detailed protocol. Third gate of the top Topkapi Palace, the Gate of Felicity, was a passage that opened up to the heart of the Ottoman Empire. Except for the ceremonies, passing behind this gate without permission was considered as a legal violation of Sultan's privacy and of court protocol. The stone in the entrance marks the place where the flag of the Ottoman Empire was centered. The audience chamber across the Gate of Felicity was the official reception room of the Empire. The audience chamber reached its present form in the 16th century. In Verun, the Inner Palace School is now the most popular section of the museum as it houses the Holy Relics section. Built as the private apartment of the Sultan during the reign of Mehmed the Conqueror, the private room was damaged by earthquakes. The original architectural elements and ornaments in the room have changed as a result of restoration activities. The Turas and verses flanking the entrance are works of Sultan Ahmed III. The tended sofa that welcomes the visitors and the audience chamber next to it are covered with Iznik tiles. Here, soil from the Prophet Muhammad's tomb, broken parts of his tooth and the strand from his bed are preserved in gold reliquaries embellished with rubies and emeralds. The Prophet's footprint, his two swords, and bow are also exhibited in this section. The sword of Caliph Ali, 
the swords of the Prophet's companions, the sword of the Kaliposman, and the Quran he was reading when he was marched. The golden cover of the black stone, Hajarul Esved, the keys of the Kaaba, the gutters of the Kaaba, Hussein's chest, and Fatma's praying mat are also among the precious relics on display. The relics displayed in special cases in the decimal chamber are works of Yahya. The vault fountain embellished with marble mosaics on the western part of the holy relics section was the place where the dead bodies of the deceased sultans were washed. The library behind the audience chamber in the Enderun courtyard was built by the order of Sultan Ahmed III. The fountain on the front facade displays the architecture of the tulip period with the colorful floral and vegetal motifs covering it. Above the smaller fountains added on both sides of the fountain appears a decorated mihrab. The walls of the library were covered with 16th century Iznik tiles and the domes and ceilings are decorated with floral patterns displaying the characteristics of the tulip period. With the 13,405 book manuscripts, and over 500 manuscripts with miniatures preserved in the library section, the Topkapi Palace houses the most precious collection of the Islam world. It is by no coincidence that the Topkapi Palace houses so many manuscripts and miniatures. All Ottoman sultans were deeply interested in the art of books. By the orders of the sultans, Manuscripts with extraordinary depictions were created in the palace ateliers and the sultans also collected works from various parts of the Islam world, thereby expanding the collection, which became the most significant part of the Ottoman royal treasure. Harem, the residence of the Sultan and his family, is one of the most important sections of the palace. Strangers were not allowed to enter the harem, and the residents could not leave. This understanding of privacy has been the basis of the architecture. Following a strict protocol, the harem was a large complex, also serving as a distinguished center of education. Similar to the Enderun, where men were trained for their services, the harem prepared women for their future roles.
Unlike the flamboyant palaces of the West, here, the architectural proportions reveal a sense of intended modesty. Of the harem residents, concubines attracted the most attention, being also the subject of various works of art. The concubines were generally war captives or purchased slaves. They were trained in a serious and disciplined way on Islamic culture, language, crafts and palace etiquette. After the novice degree, those advancing in training would rise through the ranks in the harem hierarchy to become kalfas and ustas. The Vali de Sultan chamber, where the mother of the Sultan lived, is one of the special sections of the harem. The place reflects the spirit of the 16th century with its sofa with Ivan, fireplace and fountain. Covered with Iznik tiles on the walls, the upper part of the chamber is decorated with panoramic depictions made in the Empire style of the 19th century. The Sultan Samam was built in the 16th century by Mimar Sina, who was commissioned by Suleiman the Magnificent. Sultans bathed in the iron latticed part. It was constructed to protect the Sultan from assassination attempts. Covered with white marbles, the creator feeling of peace, the Hammam is among the most notable examples of Ottoman bath culture with its delicate basins and sinks. The 14 hammams at the Topkapı Palace manifest the value of cleanliness in Turkish culture. The Imperial Hall would serve the Sultan as the official ceremony and reception hall. It was also the place where the members of the dynasty gathered together for dinners, entertainment, weddings and religious festivities. Having 26 windows, the gallery was the resting place of the Sultan's mother and wives. The ceiling and the walls, decorated with painted wooden revetments, are from the end of the 16th century. and white Dutch tiles covering the walls are from the 18th century. The chamber is heated by hot water of hammam flowing through the channels beneath the sofa. The private room of Murat III is among the most magnificent apartments of the harem. Composed of white spring blossoms on the blue background, the Iznik tiles that cover the door are from the 16th century, the heyday of the Ottoman ceramic art. With its architectural proportions and decoration style, the interior portrays the zenith of the Ottoman art. With its dome ornaments, delicate plasterwork, 
and the tiles covering the walls, this place is a monumental Turkish room showing all aesthetic tendencies of the Ottoman architecture. The Ayet El Kursi inscribed on the blue tiles around the walls. Built in 1705 by the order of Sultan Ahmed III, this adorable chamber is known as the Fruit Room. It was probably used by the Sultans for dining purposes. Over the walls of the chamber appear compositions of flowers and fruits created in lacquer technique on wooden revetments. These depictions in miniature style marks the first Western influences in the Ottoman art of painting. The twin kiosk consists of two private chambers built by the order of two different sultans. The wooden dome, rich decorative tiles and the windows in colored glass display the peculiar richness of the Ottoman palace. The twin kiosk was used as the private chamber of the crown prince from the 18th century onward. The circumcision chamber in the fort courtyard of the palace is a special section reserved for the circumcision ceremonies of the Sultan's sons. The royal muralist Levni has depicted the ceremony with all the details. Covered with turquoise and blue tiles in the facade and interior, the chamber was built on a square plan. Delicate marble fountains are seen in the inner parts of the windows. The kiosk in the fourth courtyard of the palace is made from tombak in the form of gazebo. As the Sultan was thought to have his fast-breaking meal here during Ramadan, this place is called the Iftar Gazebo. The Badat kiosk is one of the most outstanding examples of the peculiar style of the palace. Built by the order of Sultan Murat IV, in the memory of the conquest of Badat, it is the most beautiful example of architectural ornaments. The closets and casements are perfect examples of mother of pearl and tortoise shell work. Having four ivans, the Han like structure has a magnificent fireplace with a hood fume. The walls and arches are covered with tiles that rise towards the dome. The Badat Kiosk is one of the masterpieces of the Turkish art with its architecture, dazzling decorations and proportional harmony. The Fatih Kiosk, one of the first buildings of the Topkapı Palace, is now used to display the treasury of the Ottoman dynasty. 
Thrones are among the most important pieces of the treasury section. Weighing 400 kilos, this magnificent throne is called the Bairam Throne, as it was used during the religious festivities. The throne is embellished with gold plates and 954 chrysotiles. The artifacts displayed in the Imperial Treasury section are from the 16th and 19th centuries. The armor of Sultan Mustafa III, made of thin steel to cover the head and all parts of the body. The armor, glows and sword are ornamented with gold plates and gems. The weaponry displayed as part of the Imperial Treasury are also ornamented with jewelry. Nadir Shah of Persia had brought this throne as war booty from India and presented it to Sultan Mahmud I as a gift. As a delicate example from the art of India, the throne is covered with gold plates, pearls, rubies and emeralds. The top copper dagger ornamented with the world's largest piece of emerald. The ceremony kaftan has tulip motifs, which are often used in the Ottoman art. The Kaftan of Sultan Selim I. The Spoonmaker's Diamond, which has become the symbol of the Topkapu Palace. With their form and aesthetic, the flasks that the Sultans used during the ceremonies are among the most astonishing works of the Turkish art of jewelry. A writing set embellished with jewels. Made by the order of Sultan Abdul Majid, the golden chandelier weighs 48 kilo and it is embellished with thousands of diamonds. The Quran covers, made of gold, ruby and emerald, are among the most precious collections of the imperial treasury. With the magnificent works and artifacts it houses, the Topkapu Palace keeps dazzling the world by offering the visitors the treasures of the past.